Today, everyone, we'll be talking about Commander Clash Jetfire. Now, the interesting thing about this figure is... Ahoy, hoy! Uh-huh. Huh? Cool. All right, bye-bye. That was Harmony Gold, and they want my kneecaps now. Ah! Good old Jetfire, one of the big names of the first two seasons of G1. It's kind of funny, while he didn't appear a crazy amount, we'll get to that later, he still remains a memorable character. Maybe it's the fact he's a jet when most of the Autobots were cars, maybe it's his gentle giant personality. Regardless, whenever Transformers gets revived, he'll usually be a guaranteed addition and proceed to look nothing like his original form. Despite his popularity, however, he remains a bit elusive in terms of toys of his G1 form. His classics look is very stylized and looks more like his original toy, barely. There's his Generations Leader toy, which is a lot closer, though it appears to have taken classes from the movie Starscream School of Wings. And then there's Titanium, which, oh dear god. I'll just leave the National Eating Disorder hotline here. So why was Jetfire so elusive? Even during G1, he vanished after Season 2, only making one brief appearance later. Well, it comes back to his G1 toy. See, to pad out the G1 toy line, Hasbro didn't just license toys from Takara. In order to meet demand, Hasbro licensed transforming robots from anyone who could provide. Some notable examples being Omega Supreme, Shockwave, and Skylinks. They're a little more obvious considering how different they are. However, a few designs such as the Insecticons were licensed from Bandai, one of the largest toy companies in Japan who you've probably heard of. Just maybe? Jetfire was taken from one of Bandai's toys, but it wasn't just any random robot. If you know your classic anime, and not just the same gifts of Cowboy Bebop and Golden Boy from some god-awful Twitter going, 90s anime women were built different, because apparently gorgeous women don't exist in anime anymore. God, I hate nostalgia sometimes. Anyway, stop, sorry, that was a different tangent. You might recognize this design, as it's the VF1S Super Valkyrie from Macross. Macross being a long-running anime franchise produced by Big West, which kind of helped set in stone all that makes space opera and mech anime what they are today, and it continues to this day. So yeah, being a toy licensed from an anime from a rival company's toy is already kind of a rough spot, but not helping matters is that Macross was distributed in the US as Robotech by a company called Harmony Gold, who are producing Robotech toys, including of the Super Valkyrie. And due to weird legal complications, Harmony Gold had a hard grasp on Macross in the United States, preventing the release of other Macross properties or games where Macross robots appear in, but even going as far as legal action against any companies that depict robots with tech in the name, such as what happened to Battletech. So to clarify, that's three different companies Hasbro would have had to contend with if they wanted to make something that even looked similar to his original toy. Gun Megatron has less legal complications. At least that one's more so a PR issue. But flash forward to 2019 and Transformers Siege has arrived. Siege as a line had a lot of ups and some rough downs. We had probably the best shockwave up to that point, a really solid Ultra Magnus, and the ever-beloved Siege Starscream, but it also gave us that battle damage gimmick that I never particularly liked, the worst alt mode for Soundwave ever, and the worst thing that happened to Megatron since Titan. But with this new line came a new size class, with Commander Class, which aimed to be kind of that halfway house for figures that were bigger than Leader, but not big enough to be released as a Titan. And throughout it, not gonna lie, it's been kind of mixed. Like you have some amazing figures like Armada Prime, Beast Wars Magmatron, and Earthrise Skylinks, but then a lot of the times the best one I feel are locked into HasLab, or you got a leader class figure, but they have a trailer like Rodimus Prime, Motormaster, and Studio Series Optimus. Ultra Magnus doesn't count because he merges with his trailer. Not that those are bad figures, in fact, those are all objectively good. I'm just saying, it's already annoying to pay 15 extra dollars for a Voyager figure with a trailer or a cape. An extra 40 for a leader with a trailer is just a little frustrating. Now, Jetfire, you cannot say he's a leader with a trailer. I'm in awe at the size of this lad. They wanted Commander Class to come in swinging, and this is their Mike Tyson. Hi, this is Uncle Yu from the future. I wrote this right before the Mike Tyson-Jake Paul fight, and now I'm editing this after that fight occurred, and now that line sounds really awful, and it's a good figure, it, trust me. 
Coming in at one foot tall, he is absolutely packed to the brim with wow factor. They didn't put any battle damage gimmick on this guy and thank goodness, because this white and red is so clean. With so many robots in Siege looking so messy and dirty looking. It's because I'm a dirty girl. Jetfire here has arrived as our white savior. Wow, I am going to hell. Though do be warned, I have seen reports of these figures yellowing after some time. Ways around this, but it's still sad that such a thing can happen to such a gorgeous figure. The detailing from Siege is there, but with the size of the figure, it looks a lot more tasteful than most of them. It's also remarkably loyal to his G1 form, with his signature red vents and round shoulders. On the back, he's got the mother of all backpacks, though this was something in the original cartoon as well, and is something of a stand-in for Valkyrie's jet boosters. Still, I can't help but feel we can make this guy look even better. And we can. Now this, this is beautiful. This takes an already great figure and amps it up. It turns Jetfire into his G1 Toys non-union Mexican equivalent. I always did love the Valkyrie design. With plenty of super stylized mechs already out there, it was kind of cool to have a more utilitarian looking mecha as well. It really did look like something a space military would use, and that kind of thinking is reflected perfectly on Jetfire here. With big piss off guns and some serious ballistic boobies. And that mask. I love a good visor, and this looks magnificent. Looking very stern and serious, with a little bit of Jetfire's original face still visible. And there's even light piping, that's a bit crap due to the giant backpack, but hey, it's there. Gotta love the tiny skirt to go with his giant backpack, really completing the anime schoolgirl package. Articulation-wise, we got shoulders, elbows, wrists, or legs, knees, and some really nice head articulation. Though I gotta say, while I do love a ratchet joint, due to the actual inside of the figure being rather hollow for the transformation, you can kinda hear it resonate inside. It does make it sound cheaper, but the actual plastic quality is super good. Dude feels like an Armada toy. He feels even better than the actual Armada toy of Jetfire. You also get some wing articulation so that he's ready for takeoff, and you even have finger articulation with a hole for weapons popping out when he has a closed fist, though it doesn't feel great coming out. Haslap Death Source's hands couldn't come soon enough. Unfortunately, there's no ankle pivots on the feet. Minor thing because this figure is so good at standing up otherwise, but it is a complaint. It also does have waist turning, but... Well, you tried. That backpack, it might look cool and rugged, but it's just ever so slightly too low with no way to adjust. And testing the waist made me realize his nose cone kind of looks like a little peeny, and I think it's time to move on to the transformation. Transformation is surprisingly simple for such a big figure. It may say 36 steps, but it's so easy for the most part. Some of the stuff you gotta shove in or shove together does feel a little bit funky, particularly the arms. The jet mode is lovely though. Wonderfully chunky and ready for battle. Also, you can use the obligatory blast effects in a way that actually looks kinda cool. Sorry, I just don't care for blast effects normally, if I may confess. The only ones I care about are Star Sabers because they're green and I can use them as fart blasts. I personally think the box is a cooler accessory because, my god, this art is lovely. Is it my favorite play mode ever? Probably not, but it's still really, really nice. And thus, we come towards the end, and it must be said, as a way to introduce the Commander class, it's pretty dang solid. 
Obviously, the size is a big selling factor. In fact, if you want to do size comparisons, Optimus is roughly two-thirds the size of him in the show, yet his figure in Earthrise barely comes up to his willy. So, maybe it's a bit big scale-wise? Ah, who am I kidding? G1 never cared about scale. But unlike some other figures that are a bit too big to be any fun, there's a lot of joy to be had with this lad thanks to great posing and articulation and accessories. And of course, there's the simple joy of having the most accurate jet fire up to this point. But on the other hand, there is the price tag. When this guy was released, he was 90 bucks, which is a lot when you consider value. Like compared to Skylines and Magmatron, those two were big, but were also multiple robots in one that combined to form the big lad. And Armada Prime was an already great figure of the character turned into a fantastic super mode. Whereas Jetfire's big thing is that he's large and that's it. He is almost double the size of a lot of leader class figures and his accessories are nice and appeal to me as someone who loves the Valkyrie design, but I don't know how much of a deal that'll be for most people. Mind you, a lot of people apparently got this guy half price at Target, so maybe it doesn't matter. How about this? Compared to other Commander class figures, I don't know if he's the best, but as an introduction, he nailed it. All people needed for Commander class on entry was size, so why not make a big figure of a very popular character that doesn't have a lot of figures? He got the job done as a way to get people interested in the price point, and for that, he did his job well. I do wish the articulation was better in some spots, uh, but he's still great. And later figures did perfect the commander class with size and features, but this was still a great introduction. But how do you feel about Jetfire or the commander class price point in general? Any favorites? Let me know in the comments, please subscribe. And hey, Harmony Gold and Big West not too long after Jetfire came out finally resolved their differences and now we can get Macross in the States. Now if only Crunchyroll didn't screw it up. God!